Hey guys, it's Carson Miller Tech here, back with another video. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about a ton of new features that are available to the DJI Mavic Air 2 through a number of updates, both firmware and DJI Fly updates that just give this so many more features than it had before. So some of the top features that are available now are the ability to go and zoom digitally in 4K video. And you can zoom up to two times without losing any quality whatsoever. You also finally are able to adjust the gimbal speed. So this was something out of the box that was a huge complaint to me, but that option is finally available. And then you also get a number of new safety features that were added as well. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about those features. I'll be showing you how to get access to them. And then I'll also be showing you how to use the new features as well. So with that being said, let's jump right into showing you how to get access to these new features. The first step to getting access to these updates is to make sure that you have updated your DJI Fly app. Now, if you've got a phone like myself that auto updates, you may already have this update, but it's good to check in the iOS app store at least, the version is 1.1.6. And in that comes updates, the display logic for battery and flight time alerts. It also adds that advanced gimbal settings. And then also it fixes app crashing issues, blah, blah, blah. But when you open it, so since I have the new update already, you can already see that new battery update. So when you click up in the top right where the battery is, it now gives you a specific breakdown of how long you've got before each of these actions occur. And it also just gives a nicer visual and much easier to read at a quick glance of what your battery percentage is. So also on top of that, if you go to settings and you go to control, you have now got access to advanced gimbal settings. So if you click on that, you get a ton of different options to adjust your gimbal speed. And this isn't just broken down anymore to one static position. This is broken down between your different flight modes. So you've got adjustments for your normal mode, your tripod mode, and your sport mode. So it can vary depending on what mode you're in, which I think is pretty cool. And I'll be getting back into this a little bit later to show you how it works, but I just wanted to show you what's included in the DJI Fly update. But now after updating your DJI Fly app, you're gonna to wanna to go and make sure that you update the firmware of your DJI Mavic Air 2. So to do that, I've talked about this before, but just a quick refresher, go into settings, go to about, and then right where it says aircraft firmware, just click on check for updates. And once you've clicked that, it'll take a little bit, but it should go and then eventually pop up and say new firmware update available. So when you click on update, that'll take you to the update screen. And now you can see everything that is included in this new update. As you can see, there's a ton of new things that are included in this firmware update. So then once you've made it to the screen, all you gotta simply do is click update. And as long as your battery is above 40%, it will begin downloading the update. And then following downloading, it'll automatically install the update as well. So because this will take a little bit, I'm gonna go and shut off the camera and I'll be back as soon as the update is completed. Once the firmware update is installed, and as long as there wasn't any errors, you should get the check mark that says firmware installed. So that is good. All you gotta do is close that out and you are all set. I'm actually quite surprised. That only ate up 11% of my total battery. Usually updates take around 30 to at least 40% of my battery when updating, but it's left me with quite a bit here to even just show you guys all of the new features. So the big thing is that zoom feature. So after taking off here, say you wanna go and zoom in to whatever your subject is while you're filming. So right now I'm currently set to 4K recording, but you can click on the little film strip and you will now see 4K zoom. So once you click on that, it will go and it will crop in a little bit, but it'll go and now allow you to go and zoom into the image. So you can really do this three total ways. First of all, you can just click the little circle where there's the one X by the record button and that will crop in. The second way to zoom is to go and pull down on that one X and then after doing that, you can pull down on the zoom and you can slowly zoom in on whatever amount you want to zoom in at. But as you can see, it's kind of jerky. So the third way and my favorite way to go and zoom is to press and hold the FN button up in your top left hand corner and use your typical gimbal wheel to go and zoom in as well. So as you can see, that is instantly, and I think that this actually zooms in smoother than the other two methods. With this way, you can go zoom your camera, you can let go of the FN button and just move your gimbal as usual, and that is all in one place. This zooming isn't just limited to the 4K either. You can zoom in 2.7K, and the thing here that is better about the 2.7K is that you can zoom up to two times 
at 60 frames per second. So if you're somebody who prefers to shoot at a higher frame rate, then 2.7K may be the spot that you'll wanna be in if you're looking to zoom. And then 1080p, you can go and zoom in up to four times. So up to four times with the 1080p, but as you can see, the quality of this is just not great. Like I would never personally go and actually use this footage because in my opinion, this looks pretty terrible. Um, if you're looking to go and zoom in that much, I would just suggest filming in 4K in the first place and then zooming in in post later if you are somebody who goes and shoots your videos in 1080p and then just export from there. The second new thing here with the camera, as I already mentioned, is the ability to adjust the gimbal speed rotation. As I already mentioned, you go to control and then once you see the gimbal settings, in here you can adjust the pitch speed, the pitch smoothness, the yaw speed and the yaw smoothness. As you can see, moving the gimbal right now, it's relatively smooth and it's decently fast. I would say it's an average speed, but if you want it to move faster, you can adjust that pitch speed way up to 100 if you really want, and this will just instantly move the camera. Super quick compared to if you go all the way down to one, like if you want the camera to barely move at all. The normal speed is around 15, but on most of my drones, I usually like to hover around 25, as this is a pretty decent speed where if you want something to move pretty quick, then you got that, but you also got that slower speed as well. The pitch smoothness adjusts how slow the camera comes to a halt after you've let go of the gimbal wheel. So right now it just kind of stops pretty quickly, but you can turn that way up to 30. And once you let go, it'll keep moving until it slowly comes to a stop. I usually leave this pretty low. I don't really like having this smoothness too much, but it is nice to have nonetheless, and it's cool that that's there. The yaw speed affects when you are moving your left control on your controller and moving left and right with the drone. So right now it's set to 75, which is the default. You can turn it all the way up to 90, which means it moves even faster. But you can also turn it way down where if you move your drone, the gimbal will go and slow down. Lastly here, you've got the smoothness of the yaw. So if you want this to go and move slowly when you come to a stop, you can turn this way up and it will go and start and stop your drone really super smooth. So when you're making that left and right panning motion, you can get super smooth footage. Moving down, you've got those same exact options for tripod mode as well as sports mode. The only difference here is that the normal mode is the only one that really describes what these modes do but the other ones do the exact same things and will go and stick to those settings when you go and change the physical mode on the controller. So it's really all up to you how you want to control this drone. Another thing that was updated here under this control pane is FPV mode. So FPV mode had a couple of issues previously and I'm not 100% sure what has been all changed in FPV mode, but apparently it is a little bit smoother now when you are using it. Specifically, it just makes it a little bit more safe to fly in FPV mode and I kind of like this, I don't really use it too often, but it looks pretty cool and it gives you a pretty realistic FPV feel. And when you go into sports mode, it gives you even more of an FPV feel as you can go and move around at a very quick speed. Um, not as fast as an actual FPV drone, but it still looks cool nonetheless. Now, moving over to those safety things that were added, if you click on safety, you will now see a new visual element here on this tab. So. The first thing here on the top is flight assistance. So by default, it is set to brake mode, but you can change it to go to bypass mode or just completely turning off the obstacle avoidance altogether. So just taking a look at what these mean, if I bring my drone down and bring it close to an obstacle, and let's just say I wanna go and fly towards my house. So in the brake mode currently, if I try flying towards this, because of the front facing sensors, even with pressing forward, it literally will not let me go any closer to the object because it knows it's there and it doesn't want you to crash. But you can go and change this into bypass. And when you do that, you can press forward and it should go and try to fly around the object. It'll go up and over the house all by itself and get that all set by itself. And finally, that off mode is just as it sounds. If you turn this off, this is turning off all obstacle avoidance altogether and you could fly into the house, you could do whatever you want. All the sensors are disabled here. So I would not recommend doing this because no matter how advanced of a flyer you are, you're still prone to crashing your drone. So I would at least leave this on the brake mode at the minimum, but you can also choose to turn it on to bypass mode if that's more your style. And if that does happen to be your style, you may have noticed when you click on bypass, it adds the option below it to disable sideways flight. Now you may be wondering why would I want to disable sideways flight? 
Well, because the Mavic Air 2 doesn't have sideways facing sensors, it's really unprotected there. So if you choose to turn on disable sideways flight, when you try to move left or right with your drone controller, it literally will not let you go and move in those directions. It only lets you move forward, backwards, and it lets you rotate as well as go up and down. But it does fully disable those sideways motions, which is just really odd as somebody who's been flying drones for years. I don't totally dig this option, but I understand why it's there. It's for those new to flying who are worried of crashing their drone right out of the box, where when you have this enabled, you are far less likely to go and crash your drone somehow. If you want to turn this on or off for emergency reasons, or you just don't want to fumble with settings, it's actually really simple to go and turn this on and off. All you got to do is click the little hexagon over on the left side that is right above the return to home icon. And all that does is it turns on and off that safety assistance, disabling that left and right movement. It's really easy. You don't have to do anything other than simply tap it and that just turns it on and off, which I find pretty cool that they integrated that simple button right there. If you're somebody who likes to use the hyperlapse feature of the Mavic Air 2, then there are two things that are new here. You now have the ability to go and set 45 different spots to go and use your drone at. So if you're flying in the manual mode, you can choose 45 separate location or pinpoints where the drone will go to. That's up from what it was before. And I found that that's kind of close to the end of the life of the battery. So if you're setting those points and you're flying the entire route, it could drain your entire battery, but it's at least there for those who are interested in having that many different points in a specific route. Also, when you're taking those hyperlapses, you now have the option to go into the camera settings and change the resolution to 4K. So before they only had the option to shoot in 1080p or 8K, which are just completely far apart from each other. So there's now the option of having an in-between and being able to shoot at a 4K resolution with the hyperlapse modes, which I think is something that DJI should have included out of the box with this, but you know, at least they're adding it now. It's better now than never. Now as my drone battery is getting low, is really a good time to show off this new battery system. So when you click on the little new battery icon, you go and see the specific times that it has estimated for how long you've got in each of these spaces. If you need that specific granular breakdown, it's right there built into the app for you now, which is very helpful, especially when you are flying a little bit of a distance away from yourself. Finally, one of the last things that these updates fixed is when you are in sports mode, the camera will no longer go and jerk around when you are going forward at full speed. This was something that I encountered a little bit myself and a lot of other people had this issue more than myself, but whenever you would go full speed forward, the gimbal would go and kind of jerk around and then finally lock into place. And it would just look really awkward and not natural. But now when you're in sports mode, it will go and it knows that full speed and it's able to adjust accordingly. So if you're somebody who flies in sports mode a lot, then this is something that can be super helpful for yourself. So there you have it. There are all the new features that you get with the updated DJI Fly app and DJI Mavic Air 2 firmware update. Overall, I'm very impressed with what DJI has done here. Usually they go and like to release these big of updates in chunks and not really do them all at once. But with how many new features they have added between both of the updates, I'm just amazed at what they have done. And I still believe the DJI has quite a bit more that they could do with this. More specifically, they could add that zooming feature into the photo mode. Overall, is this the end of DJI updates? No, absolutely not. Especially because this is such a new drone. I really hope to see more out of the DJI Mavic Air 2, but right now, this is 100% my favorite drone to fly around. So with that being said, that is pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to let me know by clicking the thumbs up button down below as well as subscribing for future videos like this. Also, if you wanna check out my last video, that should be right over there and some random videos should be right down there. With that being said, that is it for this video. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.